Hey Christoph here, I wanted to give a quick outline of something we need to figure out regarding interactive states for all of the UI components that we are creating. So I pulled in on the left here, uh, existing input field where I added some additional states. And then here Jakob's work on the right hand side, which is from his workspace, all of these uh, button variations here. So as you know, um, interactive components are interactive and based on their state, what you, how you interacted with them, they have, they look differently. So let's just go over them real quick by the example of this input field. So we have an empty state, means you know you, you, you see a form for the first time. Um, this is placeholder text, it's not text you've written, so it's usually a little bit lighter, outlines fairly light. Then once the text is filled, it usually becomes white or like a stronger color. So you can tell it's yours. Uh, when you hover over an input field, the outline here gets a little bit lighter. So there's a bit of a response. And then when, you're at, when, it, has, when it is active, that means it is uh, selected and you're interacting with it. And it has, um, it's not focus. I always want to say focus, but focus is something different. It means it has the, <laughs> it is active, Let's just keep it that for that. The outline's also lighter and the text is light. And then for the text field, you also get this little blinking cursor here. So here you can see on the left hand, I always uh, explain what is changing uh, for each state from the default. And then focus, that's when you're tabbing around. So this input field here is not active. When I type in stuff on my keyboard, it doesn't actually enter here, but it has focus and then I can activate it. So that allows me to navigate across elements without interacting with them, which is an important accessibility uh, thing. And then disabled, uh, you need, need to make sure that uh, elements here are lighter than in the empty state. So you don't want the people to confuse those. You want this to look disabled. And, um, but you also wanted people to be able to see what's in here. So um, something to figure out. And then error, you can figure out, you know, sometimes errors are super serious, like the, the input field's red, text is red, label, title, everything's red. Uh, but you can also be a bit more subtle about it. Instead of people uh, freaking people out, you can treat this, okay, you know, there's information here, you need to do something here. And maybe even a blue light highlight here. So some information that stands out visually from the rest of the screen is enough. It doesn't have to go all overboard, but also something we can discuss. So looking at Jakobs here, there's a, there's another element to this. So the input fields are these outline elements that you type in. Buttons, you know, you just tap them. Um, and there are filled ones. We have outline ones and we have these freestanding ones. The filled ones, usually for the primary call to action. And then, you know, um, these are often just smaller or navigational, these free ones and the outline ones are somewhere in the middle. And because they have very different visual weight, you usually want to have different uh, treatments for each of those states. Uh, here's, you just have a shape to work with basically here. Here you have a background color and an outline to work with. And here you just have the color of the, um, of the text and the, um, and the icon. And of course, shapes are always visually a lot stronger. So these shapes here, these states here, they introduce uh, three new colors to our design system. Uh, orange light one, orange light two, and an orange dark one. Uh, you can see how they're used here. And um, yeah, there are a couple things to refine here, like this disabled button looks visually way stronger than this one over here. And overall, we need to figure out if um, we want everything to be super consistent. For example, if let's say, well, everything with an outline looks like this, right? These states make sense. Let's also, an input field is also an outline element. Let's apply them here too. So that means your, the hover state of, your, of an empty input field looks like this, which is with this gray text, which is, um, it's a little bit too strong for an input field, I would say. But then, you know, if you treat everything, every element in a unique fashion, like you create very custom, unique interactive states for them, then we just have to really detail all of this stuff out. And we have to put them all next to each other and make sure they're consistent when you act with them, interact with them, they feel the right way. Like every, every time you hover something, you know, it feels similar or the same, like it all goes together well. 
Um, and ideally, underneath all of this logic, we still just have you know a handful of colors that uh, work well across both light modes and uh, dark modes. So, um, got a bunch of stuff we have to figure out. Um, there are other elements like here when when I'm in a list view here, uh, what the selection looks like for something like that, or even a toggle here, or also you know I can see uh, by default. If this uh, if this button here actually went all the way to the edges, then the added um, active outline would go beyond the edge of the screen, which would look weird. So that's something we have to figure out there. And yeah, so you can see some examples here of these different states. So there's all kinds of stuff uh, we need to sort out, and I think it would be good if we could sync on Thursday during the design call and um, figure out the next steps and then you know come up with kind of a final set of what we want to go forward resolve some of the issues here and then uh, wrap this up that would be awesome and i'm looking forward to hear what you think of this thanks